Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. Are you climate curious? Are you interested in knowing more about climate change, but maybe a little bit intimidated about what might be out there? Or you feel like, well, I'm not a scientist, you know, what would I know or how could I judge? Well, there's some interesting books that you might want to have a look at. This is a very simple, thin little book. It's called Climate at a Glance for Teachers and Students, Facts on 30 Prominent Climate Topics. And it's quite a handy little one. It's very simple, lots of graphics, so it's, you know, not too overwhelming to read. Um, for people who are interested in energy issues, Samuel Ferfari did a great book called The Hydrogen Illusion. Now, Ferfari is a chemist, chemical engineer by profession, and he was a high official with the European Union for many years, and he worked most of his life on um, trying to make hydrogen into a mainstream gas that could be used for all the things it's being proffered for at the moment. However, he found that there are just some very, very difficult problems with hydrogen. Um, one of the main ones being that you lose energy every step of the way in producing it, uh, which is not what you want for an energy source. Another great book, one that I really like, which is written by a fellow who, I guess you would say he is more on the um, uh, anthropogenic global warming side of things. He's certainly not what you'd call a skeptic, but his name is Mike Hume, and he wrote Climate Change Isn't Everything. And he's quite philosophical in many of the things he discusses. One of the things I really like is his view about climatism, that once climate starts to be used as sort of an all-encompassing thing, then you very quickly move into dangerous territory, potentially totalitarian territory. And we see that today with a lot of the kind of comments that people are making uh, that if you don't comply with certain climate regulations, then we'll throw you in jail. So that's an important book to read and quite accessible. And if you want a bit of optimism, I think Bjorn Lomberg is always a great one. And this is his most recent book, which is called Best Things First. So he and his colleagues looked at uh, sort of the best value propositions for things around the world that we could spend money on that would really help human beings <laughs> rather than green billionaires. And uh, he came up with a list of uh, the 12 most efficient solutions for the world's poorest and to meet global SDG promises. So he actually does want to make life better for people rather than green billionaires. Now, um, Javier Vinos has an excellent book called Solving the Climate Puzzle. And he's evaluated uh, the impact of various solar cycles and it's uh, quite an impressive book. Lots of science in it, but quite readable at the same time. Lots of graphics and illustrations making the point. So, um, you know, both Dr. Willie Soon and Dr. Judith Curry and Dr. Happer, William Happer, have uh, very good testimonial comments toward this book. And for those of you who think that Net Zero is maybe going down the wrong path. Well, you better read Green Murder by Dr. Ian Plymer, because this will show you that Net Zero is a life sentence with no parole. Uh, we also have a, um, a whole session with Dr. Plymer on our website, on our YouTube channel, uh, one of our event videos. So. Uh, I th maybe that'll give you something to read. <laughs> Summer's coming. These would be fun to sit by the lake. Or if we get another snowstorm and another cold snap, you can curl up by the fire if it's still legal to have a fire. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like some of these suggestions. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.